Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. This is uh, a uh, webinar for the Insider Club, but I'll probably uh, go ahead and post it on uh, on YouTube also. Uh, those people won't have these files, so it uh, really doesn't matter because uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate what you can do with uh, HGSI. So it doesn't matter if I put it up on uh, on YouTube or if it's shared uh, elsewhere. Uh, as long, I'm always trying to promote uh, uh, the product and uh, the more eyeballs that see it, the better. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bring my list up and my other monitor so I can uh, see what I want to talk about here. And uh, I'm going to just start from the top of that uh, PDF file. And uh, if you minutes ago before all of you got here I just want to show that uh, all of these stocks were added uh, to the database uh, last night in fact so you can see that there uh, the this I let me restate that these stocks were in the database but they were not assigned to groups so they are now assigned to groups and I just uh, happened to hang on to this I believe add to group final these are the stocks uh, that I uh, I called out of uh, HGSI put into the spreadsheet and then match them up to groups uh, I think I did a good job but if you see anything uh, that doesn't make sense to you or if you think they should be in a different group, we can certainly discuss it, and uh, and I can always uh, reassign them. But I think uh, I, th I think it's uh, accurate for the most part. Now I'm going to bring up the spectrum analyzer, and you can see, um, and this is no surprise. A lot of these are uh, IPOs, and uh, uh, biotech leads the way with 30. These investment companies, there's a lot of them. Uh, uh, they're just uh, companies that are out there looking to uh, to buy into uh, uh, s other companies or uh, places to put their money. So there's always a bunch of those. There's uh, 14 internet-based services, lots of specialty pharma application software, and so on. So these are the dominant groups uh, which were added to the database, and it's always biotech that leads the way because there's so many biotechs uh, that come into the uh, uh, well that are IPOs because they're looking to raise money and uh, you know if they uh, hit it big uh, or if you hit it big if you like to play the biotechs uh, there is always opportunity there now you're gonna find that uh, a lot of these companies don't make money but that doesn't uh, seem to matter I mean it's it's based upon perception or the future and uh, that's what uh, what this is all about or what a lot of the biotechs are about so let me choose my group here I'm gonna get out of here I'll just go to all securities and I want to point out uh, something here the can if you look at that uh, spreadsheet or if I look at it again get out of the way here I've got to find my spreadsheet notice that uh, I had uh, these five stocks going into a cannabis index but George and I started looking around and all the other services are putting them into specialty pharma so we ended up putting them into specialty pharma for now. As this group grows, uh, so to speak, um, maybe uh, uh, it'll have a group of its own. So what I did to get around that is uh, down here in the market analysis user groups, I created a group called Cannabis or Related Stocks. These are stocks uh, which contain those or this group contains those five stocks but these other stocks are related to the cannabis industry somehow 
So, uh, and I pulled these off of uh, uh, Yahoo. They've got a, a, a list of uh, cannabis stocks. So I put the ones that are in the HDSI database into this group. And I also put it in, I put that index of these stocks into the number five folder under mar uh, market analysis user groups, indices, and in the focus view, these indexes, there aren't a whole bunch of them, there aren't many at all, but if I click through to that and then uh, just go to the quick start uh, intraday, I'll just go to the percentage return from the beginning of the year, I should actually use the uh, end of day. I'm moving pretty quickly here. I'm in folder number one, uh, view number eight. And uh, if you sort on raw combo on this, it shows you the percentage price from the beginning of the year, but you can sort on any of these columns to get different time periods. Now this group, it's been a pretty hot group, but in the last week, uh, there has been some uh, profit taking. Uh, because, uh, well, Tilray, uh, they came out of lockup. So consequently, uh, they this stock sold off. And let's see what it's doing today. Let me get, get out of here. Well, you can see right here that there was a no supply generated yesterday. And it's it's trying to hold here. But this this was a hot stock for for several days and then when the lockup period ended you can see what happened on that day. This is a uh, weekly chart of it, this is the daily chart. Notice there was an effort to fall and also a negative pocket pivot on this day. But this canopy growth is uh, seems to be the current leader in this group. I was in this, I've been in it twice uh, just day trading it. Uh, I'm currently not in it right now. Uh, primarily because uh, I'm I'm watching the setup. I may get back into it. Uh, and th this stock, uh, you know, you're not seeing any earnings or anything here. But it, it, this and uh, Tilray could actually be longer term holds and maybe some of the other ones too. But this is your group right here, and you can see where they're assigned, specialty pharma on these stocks that I talked about. Some of these others are, uh, you know, they're working relationships or, or ownership, and uh, that's why they're in this group. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll make some money uh, out of this group. Once again, I'll bring this up. The designer, you're going you're gonna to find this under cannabis or related stocks when you do your next add-on update. And it's also going to be in the indexes, indices focus view. And you can compare these in the ranking module or the warehouse module and uh, do your prospecting from this level. So anyway, we have a cannabis group in here now. All right, I guess I covered the first four, so uh, let's let's move on from there. And I think, uh, while I know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to follow this uh, uh, PDF file because uh, we're going to talk first about uh, leadership. What, what are the current leaders? And I'm going to hit my alternate space bar. What that does, it takes me to all securities and then I'll bring this view up and if you see if you look at the list let me get the designer out of the way you're going to see uh, several groups or scans that I outlined to help you find the leaders now I don't know if you use this uh, feature or not but if you don't you should Matt put this in several months ago you can search. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff in here, as you all know. But if I'm looking for the perfect speculator screen, I can just type in perfect, and uh, then I can go to my basic intraday scans. 
and it takes me right there and then I can get rid of that by clicking on the X to clear the field. But here is the perfect speculator screen. I called it a screen here. I should have called it a scan. But they're one and the same. So what do we have here? These are perfect speculator stocks based upon the book, The Perfect Speculator, uh, which came out a few years ago. And these are stocks that are hitting a three, three and a quarter year high. HGSI does not let us go back to all time highs, but we can go back 798 days and that's why I use this. And uh, the stocks are at least $5 stocks trading a minimum of 100,000 shares. And if you click on that, uh, there, there's a version for end of day and there's a version for intraday. Now here is eHealth. And you can see that uh, uh, this is a current leader. You're not going to you're not going to look in this list and find any of the former leaders. They're not there, and you know what? They may never be there again. So people that are looking to or traders that are uh, buying uh, stocks of former leaders from the the last run, uh, some of them may become leaders again. But what you're really interested in is finding these emerging leaders. And uh, I'm just going to take a look here at eHealth. In fact, uh, why don't we do this or why don't I do this? I'm going to click on the designer and I'll come back and read the chart here in a minute. And I'm going to type in E-H-T-H. -H. Oh, I, I screwed that up, didn't I? No, there it is right there. And then I'm going to click over here. This folder lets me search the groups for the stock. And eHealth is contained in all of these ETF components, all of the index components. So it's well represented. These are the in industries and major industries, uh, major market components. Uh, you can see when it passed the top 50. And then I'm going to go down here to my non-index groups. This is the reason I keep those non-index groups. Uh, because I want to see when these appeared before. And this is January of 2019. You can see that it was appearing on the 2nd of uh, January this year. If I go all the way down to the bottom and look for the 2018. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Okay, it was appearing in November, it was appearing in October of 2018, November, December, and uh, uh, this was in all VPA signals. I think most of the action recently has uh, been in 2019, so we'll concentrate on that. But I just want to point out that this has been in the leader's raw relative strength group since the first of the year. And it shouldn't be a surprise uh, that it is a leader. Now I'm going to clear this out. I'm not going to do this with other stocks. So let's just go back to the first year. It was appearing right here. And if you look at this, that, that particular smart group requires a high RS and a high group rank. And most of these uh, stocks uh, that appear in that group, well, I'd say almost all of them, have a minimum RS of 90 and a minimum RS of 96 in the group rank. Look at the EPS rank. That is totally irrelevant to this group. It's a good group to prospect in. So uh, back here on... Uh, What's the date? Uh, that's the second right there. So if I just uh, hit my alternate A key and bring this annotation tool up, let's say, well, you wouldn't be buying it the next day because it opened weaker. But let's say you bought it, and I missed this stock too. 
let's say you bought it right here off the pivot after this effort, I'm sorry, the test for supply, the low volume test for supply. So here's a shakeout. There's two negative signals and then you get a low volume test and then this thing starts taking off and it's up 41, if you look down here where the cursor is, over 12 trading days, it's up 41.8% in those 12, 12 trading days. Now, you know, I'll take that any day. And uh, now let, let's do some analysis on the chart. So looking back here, I'm going to go over to the weekly chart. This right here would be the second. So you can see that it was basing in through here, and then we had an effort to rise, another effort to rise, and the third effort to rise based upon uh, the weekly chart. Uh, these are white candles here, which indicates that there was some, uh, um, well, there's three of them in a row right here that indicates that uh, uh, there was some buying interest in this stock. But right in here, well, and this goes back to December. I'm going to talk December a little bit. But I'll, I'll concentrate primarily on, uh, let, let me turn off my uh, updating and go to manual updating. I meant to do that before. I started just to uh, keep it from updating. Okay, so looking looking at this chart you can see back in here it was pulling back what what stands out to you in this start chart well i'll tell you what stands out to me first of all there is a fan in place what do i mean by the fan it means the 200 uh, exponential moving average is down here here's the 100 here's the 50 here's the 18 and then the, the three and the six. So when there is a fan intact, uh, that generally indicates that there is institutional interest. Let's zoom out on this, and you can see that this fan has been in place from clear back here, and that was May of last year. This fan has been intact. So every time this stock pulled back, it generally pulled back to one of these moving averages. And the common moving average, as we all know, is the 50 period moving average, which is the blue line. Let me make this a little bigger so we can see this. You can see that it bounced off the 50 multiple times. That's a, that's a buy point for a, a lot of uh, institutions or traders. And look at this. It certainly looks like it's going into a climax run now, but it's a, it's it's a leader, and we're getting some uh, some negative uh, VPA flags out of here, and uh, we have an effort to rise, but also a couple of up up thrust bars. This is what you call a great deal of intrinsic risk. Down here, there's not much intrinsic risk because the stock is hugging the uh, moving averages. An, an excellent buy point for these stocks is, and this is my go-to chart by the way, it's chart number one, uh, because it, it has all the indicators that I use. It has a, a VPA, it has pocket pivots, it has the expansion contraction, the three going up through the six, and the six going up through the 18, and the volume point of control. Everything I need. If I want to see what the group's doing, I just drop down to chart number two. The group line is in here. The reason I didn't leave it in chart number one is I thought there were enough lines in this chart. So it's just a, a matter of clicking down to the next one. Anyway, getting back to this. Uh, this is pulling back. You can see that it pulled back to the 50. And what do we get? We start getting VPA flags. Now, all of these uh, flags in the news, the, the way the scans are set up, are going to start showing up now. 
Uh, a really good one is a test for supply, especially uh, when a stock is, uh, is moving up in a fan formation. This turned out to be a shakeout. This was on the second where it appeared in the, uh, in the group. So here we had an effort to fall. Uh, volume on that day. Well, it was higher than the previous days, if you look down here. Yeah, so you wouldn't be buying it that day. But but this setup right here, this is, uh, this is it's hard to see, but this low is uh, below this. This is a pivot, so an excellent buy point on a stock like this if you locate something coming off a test is right here. This is a low-risk entry. And this, uh, you know, if I get around to doing that webinar series, this is what we're going to do a lot of talking about. Because we're only interested in the low-risk entries. Uh, here's another low-risk entry. Because this, this is what's called expansion. You can see the expansion down here. And then it goes into to a little bit of contraction right here. And guess what we have here? We have another test for supply. Where's the buy point here? The early buy is in here. If you want to wait for this one to be taken out, that's a later buy. I'm comparing it to this high right here. But this would be an early buy right here, and you can see what happened with this. And this is all after the 3 went up through the 6. So if you look right here, the 3 versus the 6, this is called the micro trend. And... We have a pocket pivot back here. We have the histogram above the zero line, both histograms. This is a short-term trend. The 6 above the 18 and the VPOC is already positive. See where the VPOC turned positive? Back here after that shakeout. So this is what we want to look for. How do th This is a leader. It wasn't a leader here. When did it become a leader? It became a leader, really, when it cleared this area, in my opinion. But there was an excellent, uh, there were several excellent signals here. Now it's way too extended to even consider. Uh, right now, anyway, that does not mean it cannot rebase and go again. Okay? Any questions on that? You know, looking in retrospect, it always, it's always easy, isn't it? It's just hard pulling the trigger. Uh, when you see these setups. But if you use uh, the spreadsheet and if you define your risk, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier. Now, th this is a stock that I certainly, yes, it is. Uh, excellent, excellent signal right here, especially when you've got all these other factors uh, working for you in your favor. You've got the, the VPOC and the expansion going on, and you've got the fan. Too. This fan is a good indication of a leader. Okay, let's move on. The next one on my list is, this is the strongest monthly stocks in the Perfect Speculator. Today, the strongest stock is down 6.23%, but if I bring this one up, what the, the, the way this one works is a percentage price change 21 days is my combo. So I'm looking at 21 trading days or a month, uh, essentially. And you can see that uh, if you look at this column right here, uh, you can see that this stock over those 21 days until today was up 128 Eight percent, so it's still up over 120 percent in those uh, uh, 21 days. Look at the weekly here. This thing has been on a massive move from the six dollar area, and it got as high as what 17 and a half. Well, yesterday 17.25. By the way, if you click anywhere on the screen, you look down. The right-hand corner, it's going to tell you what that level is. So it got up to around 17 and a quarter. It, it gapped higher today. Uh, still in a fan. 
Uh, th this is a stock you can uh, uh, certainly look for. Another low volume test right here. It moved up yesterday, but it's running into some resistance today. Let's go down to chart number two. Look at this. You can see the group line has turned down. It's kind of hard to see on your screen. But I would say this is reacting to the group today. Now, this is one uh, that I think I just added to the uh, the database. It only trades 72,000 shares, so you have to be careful. But uh, people always ask me about low-volume stocks. Well, huh, here's a low-volume stock. Would you have liked to have been in this one from here to here? Let's just do this quickly. Let's say from uh, from right here, I'm on the wrong chart. What am I doing wrong? Now well, let's let's try this chart. It's not letting me do it on the. I'm doing something wrong. Anyway. 166.3% over 30, 29 trading days. Uh, a massive move. When did it become a leader? Well, it became a leader. I, I'm going to discount these over here. I would say you know, when it, when it cleared this around the $9 area, uh, th this is way back well, it's it's over a year ago, so you know I would have to classify this, you know, as a becoming a leader again at some point in here. It because it it uh, remember on this filter, this is at least a three and a quarter. Well, it should be a three and a quarter year year high unless. Uh, Okay, we're talking weekly chart here. Unless I did something wrong on this. I don't want to dwell on it. Anyway, it's passing this screen right now. I'll check it out later. But the criteria right here, see this column right here? Days closes high. It has to be at least 798 days. So that's where these stocks come from. Okay, so those are a couple of ways to look for the leaders. What, what do I have next? 52-week high. It says SGWB 52-week high. This is a smart group I put together years ago uh, when Ian and I were together. Uh, if you don't want to look at the longer term, the perfect speculator, I suggest you come to the, I suggest you come to the 52-week high anyway. And, and look at it. Uh, it's, it's a good place to look for leaders. Let me get this out of the way. And you can see that here is a stock. It's a little, um, almost a $6 stock. But it, on the weekly chart here, a couple of efforts to rise, big efforts to rise here, pull back, didn't challenge this down here at all. Highly speculative stocks in this range, but you can make some uh, really good money too. And the analysis is all the same as it is for a uh, larger stock. Pocket pivots, uh, micro trend, expansion contraction, uh, VPOC. Let's look at one more in here. Here's another inexpensive stock. Came down here. Bingo, oversold. What do we have? We have some really nice uh, VPA flags right here. We have a pocket pivot. The VPOC goes positive. It goes from contraction. Let me get rid of this. It goes from contraction because the histogram is uh, below the zero line in both of these. And then here's where your expansion begins. Where does it begin? It begins on a low volume test with a confirmation of that test. Just because it's a 2 or $3 stock.
it's just because it's a two or three dollar stock does not mean it cannot be analyzed just like every other stock. Look how beautiful this is. Uh, he, here is uh, it's writing the micro trend, and from this point on, here's a confirmation. Let me bring up that alternate A again. That is a 28.8% gain over 14 periods. I know most people don't like to look at these. Uh, I watched part of a, um, a webinar or a seminar that uh, Chris and George Lee did. And George Lee said that he, in the past he would never look at these stocks. And now he trades them all the time. Why? Because... Uh, they move a, uh, a short distance or a, a long distance in a short period of time. Okay, Pete has a note up there. If anybody's short Pacific Gas, uh, evidently uh, cleared of responsibility. That sounds a little bit strange in those California fires. So that, that is another way to scan for leaders. Let me go back up to my main chart. You can see that it, uh, the fan really didn't get into, the complete fan didn't go into place until right here just recently. But it certainly uh, crossed the, uh, the three went above the six and the histogram got above the uh, zero line and uh, VPOC and everything else fired. So, when did it hit its 52-week high? It looks like it it hit it here originally. And here's another thing you can do. Uh, I mentioned this. Uh, if you look down at the charts at the bottom, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to screen for V visual filter back test chart view. I'm going to bring this chart up and then I'm going to click through here. Well, evidently it just hit a 52 week high here because it is. Uh, let's let's take a longer look at this. OK, you can see all this back here. It's just hitting a 52 week high at this point. And uh, the reason I know this is because these green bars are here. What what happens for any of you who don't know this, anybody new to the program, using this chart view, it's a visual filter back test. Anything, the filter actually transfers from the warehouse to the chart. So when the conditions are met, then you're going to see green lines on this chart. Okay, let's let's look at another one. Let's look at eHealth. Okay, and you can see where eHealth was hitting 52-week highs back here, and then a retracement here, and then this this cup formed here. It hit a 52-week high, and from all of these instances here, it was hitting a 52-week high again. So it's just transferred from the filter in the warehouse to the chart. It, it, it's a nice thing to look at if you want to see where uh, a, a filter uh, actually uh, triggered. Okay, now I want to go back to my regular chart, so I'll just click that X. Notice how quickly you can get around using that search, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, let's move on. 52 week high and then uh, the next one I uh, suggest, and I'm probably giving you too many suggestions here, but this right here is the number seven view. This is a raw relative strength, raw group, smart group. And this is uh, where uh, the uh, eHealth was showing up for a long time. Here it is right here too. Here are several other stocks that are in this group. Let's just look at this. Now, 
Here's the leader. ICAT. If you look over here at the weekly, um, I don't know. I may have looked at that before. Let's look at JKS. It, it, it always helps to have the weekly charts up here so you can get a feel for how uh, the, um, the stock is building momentum. You can see a gap up here and then a pullback, but then start seeing several white candles. If you get three white candles in a row, that's a pretty good indication that there is some uh, uh, strength building in these stocks. Look at this right in here. Effort to rise. Didn't do anything. Went sideways. Strength seen returning. And this one confirms that strength right here. And then this stock took off. You can see how, how valuable these uh, VPA flags are. And uh, you have the ability to scan for these now. What else happened on that day? Okay, the VPOC turned positive. Um, it was going, it was still a negative here, and then it went neutral, and then it went from contraction to expansion right here, and it uh, took off again. So this is all in the number seven view. Now if I go up here, look at this, the RS is 94, the group rank is 94. Don't care about the EPS. It doesn't factor into this group. This scan... I'm going to show you the filter on this quickly. This scan goes directly to the smart group of 100 stocks, which is created every day uh, when you do your nightly update. And uh, that's why it works. It, it, uh, it's only looking at these stocks that have the high RS and the high group rank. And then if you have the uh, time to look through the day, you can see which of these stocks are moving uh, throughout the day. This is an ADR here, a Kronos. Let's take a look at Kronos. Okay, look at this. It's uh, look look at these great uh, VPA uh, signals again here, and look at the co confirmation here with the VPOC and with the pocket pivots and going from contraction. To expansion. FN, somebody mentioned this on the uh, the board, uh, the Skype board today. If you, by the way, if you never visit the Skype uh, uh, board, you should become a member of it. Just uh, send me an email and uh, I'll forward it to Paul and he'll let you through the gate. Now this one's a little loose for my taste here, but you can see how this one has been building on the weekly chart for a long time. Here is a low volume tester supply. It looks like it wants to go lower here. Right here on this one, strength seen returning after a downtrend. And that was really, well, no, got a little bit lower here, but it had to move up and then a shake out here. Turned around, we didn't get another VPA flag until right here. This is what I mean by uh, loose. And you can see the looseness uh, down here in the VPOC because there's all kinds of signals. You can also see it here in the expansion contraction windows. Uh, I just like to look for stuff that's a little bit tighter. Okay, I better move on. Time's going quickly. Uh, here's another one you may want to take a look at. This is something I put in, uh, uh, I want this quick pick, not that one. Okay, well, I, I can't find it right now, so what am I going to do? It's, uh, I'm going to type in accumulation. I want accumulation, acceleration, I want it intraday. See how handy the search is? And these are stocks that are moving up because the accumulation indicators are moving in synchronization. Let me see what I have for a filter here. The AD direction is moving up. The AD velocity is moving up. Um, the percent AD, you can see these are moving up. has to be at least C accumulation and less than or equal to A on both of these. So I, 
I, I'm looking for a, a minimum of C accumulation, and you can see that add tran. If I look over here, has C accumulation. I'm going to bring this stock up. And this was from uh, yesterday. Here is today is what it's doing today. Now I'm going to move to a different chart. I'm going to, uh, if you look down at the bottom of your PDF file, you'll see that there is an accumulation acceleration. It's called a trend chart, but I'm just going to put in accumulation acceleration. Trend chart right here, that's end of day, but it really doesn't matter. I'll use the enter day though. And let's make this chart larger. You can see that these conditions were met whenever a green bar shows up here. So on these days, the uh, accumulation, here's the, the uh, this is uh, AD velocity is red, AD percent AD is green. When these are moving up, the accumulation acceleration is going to kick in. And there were several days here. We had a retracement here. We have a no supply at base sideways, no supply here. And then the past two days, there has been accumulation acceleration. And look at today. I mean, uh, this would have been a great stock to be in today, wouldn't it? VPOC turned positive yesterday, as did the uh, uh, pocket pivot. So here, here was an indication. Once again, this is in the ex accumulation acceleration. These may not all be leaders at this point, but these are stocks that uh, are under accumulation. Let's look at let's look at Southwest Airline. We're all familiar with this stock. Now this this is not a leader yet. Uh, you can see that uh, on the daily chart, there's a lot of resistance over here. But I just threw this in to maybe help you look for stocks that are showing signs of accumulation that may become leaders again. It really uh, probably doesn't, well, it doesn't belong under the leadership scans. But some of these stocks may, may be leaders. But look at Southwest. Start showing up here two days. Little pullback right there again. And then, uh, did they report today? Uh, yes, they report today, 124. No wonder it's up. But uh, you can see that uh, uh, traders, investors, funds, whoever was accumulating this stock during this time period after the major sell-off. So th that... This screen, accum accumulation acceleration, can be used in conjunction with this chart if you want a visual on it. If you don't care about the visual, just use uh, the basic charts. But now you know how it works. Yeah, nice move up. L look at all these VPA flags down here at the bottom. And uh, the next one is uh, that I put in here is I once again I don't want the chart. Quick pick. I want the it's not it's going to be now see I can't even find my own stuff so what do I do? I type in 14 liters within 5% of the 52-week high. And these stocks, if they're within 5%, are going to be uh, in, in the leader area. If you look right here at this column, you can see as of yesterday how far they were from the 52-week high and very close. And then if you use the intraday, I'll do an F5 and update this. You're going to find stocks in here that uh, are moving intraday, and you know they're within 5% of the 52-week high. So they certainly uh, 
uh, should fall in the leadership category. I should be about done here. Probably isn't going to change it that much. CMG was on top uh, 40 minutes ago. Still digesting. It's number three right now. Uh, Keys uh, is on top. Uh, first serve, which dot, bought first data the other day. Uh, Chipotle. Uh, Rena Center is right here. I'm in Rena Center. But these are stocks that are within, as of yesterday, within 5% uh, of their 52-week high. And now here is a stock uh, that here's coming off a pivot right here. Here's a pullback. Uh, you can see that there was a little bit of buying yesterday. An early buy point on this would have been above yesterday's high. And because it's within 5% of the 52-week high, uh, it's it's a, uh, a potential buy. Expansion is expanding again on that one. Here's the, uh, okay, isn't that interesting? The VPOC turned positive yesterday. Uh, pocket pivot confirmation uh, today. Uh, look where it came off here on the effort to rise. Uh, look at these V. Uh, or these uh, flags over here. Here's a one day shakeout and then a reversal. Uh, but here it's set up again and uh, it uh, is moving. Earnings are already out of the way because the next earnings date is uh, March or earnings have been reported a, a few months ago. So what else do we have? We have the fan in place. This is a leader, no question about it. Look at this one. Here's the day they bought, announced they bought first data, uh, stopping volume. It hasn't looked back, and it keeps going. Almost a uh, breakout here on the weekly, uh, getting very close. Here is a low volume test and a confirmation of that test. These VPAs uh, flags work great on the weeklies also. Uh, it's just that we cannot scan on weeklies. We scan on dailies, but if you... You're starting to get, if you have a layout like mine, if you start getting signals on dailies, you're going to get start getting signals over here. So you scan on the dailies and then you look over here uh, for confirmation on the weeklies also. Let's look at Chipotle. Well, that's a very expensive stock. Let's look at RCII. Uh, I'm in this one. I've been in it. Uh, well, if you look at the bottom of your PDF file, you'll see when I got in. I got in January 8th. It's been kind of frustrating. Uh, today it did break out to a new high, but uh, even though it's generating a pocket five-day pocket pivot, volume's pretty light today. I'd like to see more volume. I don't know what happened here. Uh, maybe earnings, but boy, they didn't leave it down very long. It's got... Uh, Heavy institutional sponsorship, 94.6%, 53 million shares. Short interest, 12.4 million. Uh, ROEs, 6.16%. But I, I'm more interested in the chart. And uh, you can see that there has been some really nice earnings growth right here. And the projected earnings on the 19th of February are, sp are around 145%. So even though... I got a little frustrated. There was no reason to sell this stock. Yeah, it. you can see the expansion here went to a, a congestion area. Here's a red bar here. And doing nothing. And then the past couple of days, it uh, is uh, uh, trying to get past her. I need some more volume on this, uh, hopefully uh, with this fan in place. And th this, is, this is a case of buying a leader again. Why do I say that? Because of the fan, okay? So th those, are the, those are the leaders. Now, uh, what I also suggest that you do, those are the ones I'm suggesting. 
Uh, and most of those are under the basic uh, scans end of day and intraday. Uh, go to uh, the um, momentum scans. These are also excellent scans. Uh, 8585, uh, all you former IBD uh, users or current IBD users, if you're looking for 8585 stocks, here's a quick way to find them. Here's audio codes. I didn't bring that up, did I? And you can see that it is uh, it's out to a new high on the weekly. Uh, look at this stopping volume, effort to rise, low volume test, reversal here, went down for a few days. Where did it stop? It stopped at the uh, 6 and the 18. You can t uh, tell that because the histogram didn't go quite negative. We did have a negative pocket pivot here, but we have a positive VPOC today. This is a stock. I don't have an earnings due date on this one, which looks like it's setting up nicely. And uh, coming off of a pivot, the actual buy point, if you just use the last three days, would be right in here. You'd have a stop somewhere down here for position sizing. sizing and uh, not a bad uh, looking stock. I'm going to have to look at that uh, uh, more later. Now here is Square. This is an 8585 stock. If I bring this down, you can see the minimum. It's a 9695 stock. Group rank is not figured in here. Earnings for sure, relative strength. If you're interested uh, more in the earnings aspect, um, this, this is a stock you should look at. Once again, look at all these great flags here. Okay, you can just go down through these. I'm, I'm going to run out of time. Uh, but, you know, we, we can build on this. And when, when I do the webinar, uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on these uh, because I just can't get through them uh, in an hour. They all serve a function. If you're interested in, in stocks with EPS and revenue growth or uh, right here, I suggest on here that you make a group from this. If you look under the exercise uh, you can make a group from this and you can scan on this because you're going to get 945 stocks out of this database uh, that have uh, earnings and revenue growth and uh, uh, with a rising earnings estimate for the current quarter. Why don't I do that uh, right now and then we'll go look at a few VPA uh, flags uh, for the next several minutes. So I'm going to hit my alternate G keys. These are, this will go under user group, EPS Rev Growth, I'll call it just to keep it simple. And you'll see this turn from all securities. It's well, it should. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Okay, so I'm now in this folder. Now let's go up here. These are, th this is going to be my original talk, topic, but I, I thought uh, bringing the uh, leadership in is a good thing to do. These are individual scans, bullish. Now I'm going to click on test for supply. So if you're looking for stocks with EPFs and revenue growth with test for supply, uh, as of yesterday, here is a list of those stocks. And you can see that 28 uh, securities passed this list. And I'm going to bring up United Community Financial. Uh, you can see that here is a test for supply. Here is a confirmation of that test today. That's what this yellow flag is. Now, if uh, tonight, if you scan on this. If this closes like this with these two flags, uh, if you click on number three now in the individual scans, let's see if this, if I've got the right one here. Yes, I do. So number three in the individual scans, what you're going to get, this is, I this is under individual scans, but with the filter, 
uh, set up the way it is. It's low vol test 2. That low vol test 2 incorporates both of these VPA flags so you don't have to use or I don't have to we don't have to use a double uh, uh, entry anymore on the filter. So let's let's look at these two right here. This is here's the low volume test. Here's the confirmation. This stock is up today. All three of these just happen to be up today. I want to show these to you here. Did I get the yeah EPR is up? They look the same, don't they? This is a very good scan. Some people call this the J flag. Yeah, there's a scan for two. Look right here, John. I I give you everything right there. Stopping volume. Every every VPA combination in in HGSI is now represented in these scans. Okay, I see, John. So, test for supply is an excellent one. Test for supply in an uptrend. Well, these are pulling back today. Just because they're pulling back, though, I don't think you want to buy O'Reilly, but uh, just because they're pulling back, they're worth looking at because you can see that uh, this stock had a test pulled back a little bit, but you can also see the buying in here today because this is in the, if you look at this column right here, it's in the 60 percentile of the intraday range. So pulled back a little bit, but it may be setting up again. So this would be coming off a pivot, kind of an expensive stock, okay? Here's your no supply list. So uh, just remember, and I'm sure you all know this, these are signals from last night, and that's why if you can look during the day, you're going to see which of these stocks are moving up. Uh, Peter, we really can't look back. You're going to have to do it visually. Uh, I haven't figured out a, a way to do that. And, and the reason the reason is because all VPA uh, flags, whether up or down, are in the file. So, uh, you know, if I come out with a way to do it, uh, ju instead, just, you know, uh, you're just going to have to look at, at, like, stopping volume now and then uh, going forward. If you like the looks of a stock, you're just going to have to put it in a list. I don't like the looks of this one. But next era energy partners here is yesterday. You know, put it in a list and see if it follows through. Uh, that's the only answer I can give you right now. I, I, I have not figured out a way uh, to go back in time and find it. But uh, I tell you, I'm always looking. So maybe I'll come up with something eventually. But all of these, and I'm not going to go through all these today. I don't have time. But all of these, uh, the more popular ones are on top. And uh, these down here, you're rarely going to see. But here's one. This is strength seen returning after a downtrend reverse up thrust. It did appear. Here's your slight downtrend. Here's your reverse up, up thrust and stopping volume. So there are multiple signals. Now, what I do want to point out is that in these filters, after I put them together, I noticed that, and this is a really good example right here, that if there were multiple VPA flags and one of them uh, appeared through the screen, uh, the other one uh, would not. So I wanted to uh, relax the filters. And uh, so I started using the word contains rather than equals. And that way I can find 
uh, or we can locate stocks that are giving multiple VPA flags rather than just the single. So, and maybe that's not, let me see if I can find a better example, but, but it certainly worked out here. Here's your reverse up thrust, but it was also stopping volume. Let me go back up here to the top. I'm going to go over a little bit, if, if you don't mind. Okay. Signature Bank. See that, this down here? Last night there was a test for supply. It's, uh, it's down slightly today. Uh, these were, uh, all of these had uh, uh, two days ago a negative flag. Let me see if this is going to work. I may be thinking about this incorrectly. So here's the signature bank. Here's here's the low. No, I'm 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 thinking about this wrong. Anyway, I don't want to waste time on this. I'll figure it out and we'll talk about it next time. But what I did was starting use on this one. There there's two different low volume tester supply. This one is very rare. It is a white box. So I put them both in here and I use the operator contains rather than equals. So if either one of these low volume tests appear, uh, then uh, it's going to pass the screen. And that's what I was hoping I would see here. But uh, I, I don't see it. Does that make sense? It just opened these up a little bit. And... Uh, uh, I went in and I changed every one of them uh, to use the word contained to uh, to uh, give us uh, that added power. Now, I'm not going to look through all these, like I said, but I do want to point out, and we're going to spend a lot of time on these uh, uh, when I get into that webinar series, and I hope to do that early, early to mid-February, now that I've got all my, uh, my uh, scans done here. Uh, okay, individual scans bearish. A lot of times what you're going to find is that on these bearish scans, especially if the market is up, and I assume the market finished up today. Did it? I don't have it uh, up uh, a clear view of it. But a lot of times you're going to find stocks that uh, don't carry through. Now let's go to um, effort to fall in a downtrend. These all fell through. Effort to, to fall. This is negative, but notice that there is a, a green here. So a lot of times you can come in here. Now look at all these stocks that had an effort to fall. Thank you, George. An effort to fall yesterday, but they reversed today. So what does that tell you? Well, let's bring up a chart and take a look. It tells you that this uh, may be, well, I don't like, well, there are some good VPA flags here. And it was moving up nicely. But then a big shakeout yesterday. So when you see buyers step up in these uh, uh, negative screens, it could just mean a shakeout. Let's look at the one more of these. Okay, so this one is, was really not doing much. Continental building products. Let's look at the group. Group moving down. Um, effort to fall here, but buyers stepping in. So what you can do, it, it takes work. Uh, you can put some of these stocks in a, uh, a watch list for the following day. Uh, to see if they follow through. Just a thought. Uh, just because we get VPA flags doesn't mean that they're going to follow through, especially as we all know, the market determines uh, 50 to 60 percent of a stock's movement. So you can have some great stocks and on a bad market day, as we all know, you can get killed. So uh, just uh, Remember that uh, uh, 
most of the movement for a stock is based upon uh, what the market is doing, but you can also use these negative screens. Uh, but if you if you have the ability to follow during intraday to see which ones are coming back. Now this uh, CBRE group, look at this, 91.44% of the daily range on low volume. So we're starting to get some accumulation today. Volume's low, but here's a shakeout and here's here's a reversal today. Now let's go back up to the top. My my go-to chart. Negative pocket pip yesterday, but notice that the uh, expansion stayed positive on this. This is just a couple day shakeout, and then buyers are stepping back up. So use these screens both ways. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to quit pretty soon. I want to go over uh, a few of uh, uh, stocks that I'm in I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to spend very much time on this. I don't have a lot going on. They're mostly... Uh, inexpensive stocks uh, let's just go to scorecard and it looks like most of them were up today now what, what I did on your sheet is I put uh, the uh, the symbol and the current or my purchase date and I want to go through uh, some of these very quickly. I'll start with AMSC. I bought this and RCII back on January 8th. So let me find the 8th. That's the 14th. 7th. So I bought this one right here on this effort to rise as it cleared uh, the high right here, it looked like it was going to go. I, I, It's been a frustrating stock for me to hold, but there is absolutely no reason to sell it. Uh, you can see that the uh, it's got a slight expansion on it today. It went neutral because the uh, price went down. The, the three went down through the six, but it's in a fan formation. Here's uh, that so-called so J flag right here. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to sell it, and I'm up on it. I'm uh, I'm positive on this stock. Let me look. Well, I'm not up much, hundred bucks, but I'll take a hundred dollar profit uh, any day. Okay, the next one I bought on that day, I, I showed you this one already was Rena Center. And why did I buy it? Okay, I also bought it on an effort to rise. Um, it, uh, I, I believe I saw this one intraday and that was forming. So I went ahead and bought it. It looked like it was going to go. Uh, frustrating once again. What did it do? It pulled back. It, uh, it found support really here at the 18. The fans in place started moving up again. Another one day shakeout effort to rise yesterday hit an all-time or a new high today. You can see it over here on the daily chart. And I'm up uh, uh, because of my positions. The first stock I mentioned, I only bought a couple hundred shares uh, because my stop was further away. I use that spreadsheet all this time for position sizing. This one, my uh, uh, stop was not as far away, so I was able to buy 400 shares. I'm up about 450 bucks on, on this stock. Still no reason to sell it, okay? Now, these other three I just bought uh, last Friday. Rambus, fortunately, the semis were up today. Where was last Friday? Here on the 18th. And uh, uh, once again, I bought it coming. This is a low. This fan is down, obviously. But look at look at all these VPA flags. Here's an effort to rise, and I bought it, and then of course what happens? It pulls back. Frustration, and then uh, the semis opened very strong today, and uh, it's moving out. But you can see that it closed 
off off of its high volume was above normal, closed at 66.67% of its daily range. Uh, see what if if I'm up on that one. Up a hundred dollars. I was behind a hundred dollars. That one I I was able to buy five hundred shares because of position sizing. Uh, hundred eight million shares out. Seventy six percent institution. So there's a lot of shares out. It's going to take a lot to move that stock. Got a problem. Earnings are coming up uh, early next week. So. I may hold it, I may not, but there's absolutely no reason to sell it right now because, uh, look at this, the expansion is in place, the VPOC is in place, and uh, I'm hoping for some carry through tomorrow. Let's look at Lattice. Bought it on the same day. Here was a rejection up here. Let's see, this was the 18th right here. It cleared this. I was uh, buying it off of this is a pivot here. It cleared that pivot area. I was hoping it would clear this and get a move on it. What happened? Came down. Nearly hit my stop. Uh, I did not have a hard stop in place. I had an alert. Uh, it got about 10 cents away from it. Held on to it. Uh, no reason to sell it either. Uh, it uh, closed at 57.35%. Uh, let's see if I'm up on it. I'm only up 60 bucks on it. I have 600 shares of it. So uh, I was able to uh, uh, buy a fair amount of shares because of the position sizing spreadsheet. Now, the only other one I have is Tech Target. I'm behind on this one, $36. Not going to worry about that too much. But I like this stock. I bought it on Friday which was the 18th, a uh, little bit late. I would have preferred to get it here on the 17th. I noticed it on this day. It was in expansion mode, very tight chart. Fan is down. I know that uh, I'm going against the grain. Let's see what the group's doing. Well, group was moving up, and then it came down. Consequently, it came down. The stock itself... Uh, it's sold off a little bit even today. Uh, but uh, look at this. Look at the earnings growth on this. Projected uh, quarter is down slightly, but the last uh, three quarters, four quarters, have been good on it. Internet media. Uh, what do I have on this? I only have a couple hundred shares of it. No big deal. Uh, but once again, really no reason to sell it yet. If it hits my stop, uh, I'll take it off. But look at this. Uh, at the end of the day today, you can see no supply, a sign of strength. Selling on as volume goes down. All right, so uh, those are the uh, the recent uh, uh, acquisition. So, it, well, that's not good. They were expecting Intel to do really well this quarter, and we'll see where it ends up. So it's down 7%. Uh, anyway, um, th this is how I'm looking at stocks. And notice when I talked about these five stocks, what I talk about primarily, uh, low-risk entry. Low-risk entries. Uh, that's what uh, is important. Uh, yeah, you, you can chase the high flyers if you want to. And uh, if you're following the high flyers, let them set up again. Uh, because... Uh, Otherwise, you have that uh, intrinsic risk. This this risk in here, these low risk entry stocks, uh, these are called uh, a low contextual risk. Why contextual? Because using this chart, here's the context. The context is fan up, uh, pull back, and looking for an entry in a congestion area, like right in here. And uh, uh, that has relatively low contextual risk. All right. Any questions? If not, I better shut this down.